Hello, hope you are ready for more open. Our next guest is a Bronx native entrepreneur working to unlock equity gaps around literacy and children and families in the Bronx. A children's book editor with over 10 years of experience, she is currently fundraising to start a children's bookstore with a curated selection of books that represents the diversity, language, and spirit of the Bronx. Joining now to share more is Wildflowers and Books founder Conchetta Gleason. How are you? I'm so wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, thank you so much for being here. Obviously, it's such an important mission, something that you are um, obviously aspiring to do. But before we get into that, um, and obviously the GoFundMe as well that is out there, can you share a little bit more about your experience in literacy, your background oh, as well? Wow. Um, my whole life is literacy. I am a lifelong reader as well as a lifelong Bronx girl. My, I'm, my love of learning started in my school library in my New Republic branch. And that really translated to once completing Fordham, my undergrad there, then I was really lucky to find a temp job at Scholastic, at book yeah. clubs. And I showed up the day after my assignment ended and I said, I worked here. And they're like, you're right, you do. <laughs> and we, uh, but then like a few months I went permanent and I really honed my skills as a curator in that space for about 10 years. Then I was fortunate enough to work with Little Libro, so really wonderful uh, uh, small publisher in Los Angeles where I created books for trade market, meaning Barnes & Noble, meaning Target, and a few award winners on that list I'm really proud of. <laughs> but that I had the opportunity to curate books as well as create books and work with artists directly. So I have a really from the back of the mind point of view about right. literature, about creating books. And for me, it always comes back to where I'm from. We're such incredible storytellers. We're such an incredible, rich, vibrant reading community in the Bronx. The one thing we don't have is a store for mm. children, a, a third space that really inspires that families and caregivers and children can come together and enjoy and have access and ownership of books for themselves in their homes. Yeah, which I feel like is long overdue. Oh my so. gosh. Yeah, it's so important um, that you are speaking about this. And I wanted to get that little background because I think, and I want to know as well, how did that empower you to what you are looking to do now as mm. well? I mean, for me, it was such a clear gap that it almost, after a while, you know, you think you like you can't do it, you can't do it. And then after a while, it's like you have to do it because it's the children deserve it. They just so richly deserve a space of their own in the Bronx where they can enjoy books and they can interact with authors and illustrators. And of course, my piece is about green space and books. So I want them to get their hands dirty as well as and clean it up and then <laughs> take their books and take it home with them. I really want them to have a sense of connection and belonging because right now, just as a, as a creator, as an editor, the Bronx is experiencing a golden age of children's literature. The amount of authors and illustrators we have now in picture books, middle grade, young adult that are doing the most incredible work that would take your breath away and our kids deserve to know about it first. Yeah, such an important mission. And I think that's so true that it's like, we don't have to look so far to no. find these incredible stories. We have to look storytelling. in the mirror and we have it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, with that as well, I know you obviously have a big focus as well on community. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you to bring something like this to the community and the impact it can have on them long term as oh, well? Oh, goodness. I, it's everything. In terms of literacy, it's not just for the children. It really is deconstructing intergenerational illiteracy. What does it mean to have our, our mom, our dad, our grandparents read with us as well as future generations? What does it mean to when the child is the leader in the literacy at home? When they're bringing books home and they are reading with their family, making it a nightline, nightly routine. And also we have a borough, we have a lot of rich home languages that are not just English, mm -hmm. creating and providing books that are for families with who are multilingual. And what does it mean to empower them to become leaders in literacy for the future for their own children? Yeah, I've, it's a total like family affair. Oh it my can, God, absolutely. Everyone can be impacted by this, which I think is so special. I know you are also, while we are, it, well, you are in the GoFundMe stage right now yes. where you are fundraising. You also have something online as well where people can start getting informed, start purchasing books as well. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about that oh, space. We have, there's a really incredible initiative called bookshop.org. And that way you can choose an incredible independent bookstore. And it's not just me. The Bronx has a lot of really interesting bookstores on the rise. I really want to shout them out. And you can go on bookshop.org and you can select your bookstore. You can select Wildflowers and Books. And you can look at a curated selection of books. I like to have something about nature, about Bronx authors who are uh, young adult, who are picture book, as well as different genres I think are just really interesting. But if, not, if that's not for you, you have a specific book in mind, you can type in that title and you can still have proceeds go towards your store. 
Okay, yes, and I, I was scrolling through it and I did find books, whether it's for pride themes, yes. indigenous voices as yes. well, which I just was, and some of them, even like Bronx storytellers, yeah. Bronx, Bronx authors, yeah. uh, stories about people who grew up in this borough as well, which I was like so special and I oh. wish I had that when I was younger yes, as well. Yes, oh, I would have, I mean, part of why I'm doing this is I would have killed for this as a child. Like I would have probably never left the store. I would have lived there. <laughs> but so, I mean, as much as it's for the children, it's really for the adults of the Bronx who I can't tell you the amount of times people have stopped me and said, I wish I had this as a child. I would have done anything to read. I would have read more. I had the inclination. I didn't have the resources. Yes. Well, now you are aiming to do that. Yes. Obviously, talk to me a little bit about the GoFundMe, this mm -hmm. fundraising stage. What is all this, like, funds? What would they go to? How do they help, obviously, our community So, as actually, well? what, I've, uh, what we've done so far with the GoFund really is purchasing books. That is really critical because the best way you can support an author is an illustrator is buy their books. Mm -hmm. And that's where they can earn royalties. From, from there, I've been able to purchase books for programming with Phipps Housing. I've been for all the students, uh, children, to get their books for free. I've been able to purchase books for school programming, and bring in an author, and they can and do a book launch with them, which a, a book birthday, and that's so special with a child. Like yeah. you are the first person to get this book in the world, and they just kind of look at you in shock, like what? And I'm like, that's the author, and they're like, who? <laughs> And it's adorable, so the idea of really putting books in kids' hands, and that's when where the money always goes first. Wow, that's so special. Mm -hmm. With that as well, obviously you were talking about potentially, you know, when could the launch be of, <sighs> obviously, if all the funds are raised okay. or if we make a certain mark. Listen, your math god's ear this year. Uh, <laughs> okay. That's what I'm really pushing for. I'm looking for retail space, in particular retail space that is generous to uh, the idea of green space as well. Okay, which is so important. So hopefully if someone is listening, you Come know, on now. Support, <laughs> how can people get involved as well? Uh, absolutely. You, I'd be love, it to, love to bring on volunteers who can help with uh, especially community events and community gardens okay. to help uh, also Books are heavy, so and usually it's your girl with her two suitcases, with her package of soil and her seeds in one suitcase and 40 books in the other. Wow. We, truly, my friend Kashan from Cultivators was laughing at me because we did school programming together the day, and he walked up, and I had two suitcases, and he was like, oh, my God. You're like, the hustle does like, not stop. The hustle stop. does not stop. <laughs> so the, even just as simple as helping doing read-alouds, carrying the books, providing supplies, in-kind donation, in donations can go really far with programming like this. Okay, so yeah, there's a way for everyone to get involved, oh not just on the financial side, the volunteering Absolutely. side, like you said, which is so important. Yes. Uh, with that as well, I know that in the meantime, you are still doing programming out there to still yes. reach the children, yes. families. Talk to me about one that is coming up on Thursday, April 25th. Oh, I'm thrilled with part in partnership with Community Board 6 and Bronx River Community Group, which I have to say I'm a proud member. Uh, we're all land stewards. We're providing uh, five months of pre-programming so we're having the celebrated author uh, illustrator CGS Bronza and he's doing a read aloud with his books Kicks in the Sky which is a picture book inspired by sneaker culture in the Bronx wow. and he is going to be reading aloud with the kids we're going to do a plant activity and we're going to have the kids take the containers uh, that they create home with them as well as a free book Oh, that's so, so exciting. Yes. So you get two things. Yes, okay. exactly. And you get to enjoy yeah. community garden. We're also going to buy pizza because we love kids and we want them to have pizza. <laughs> I mean, we also love pizza. I mean, come so on now. Good. It's also for the adults. <laughs> <laughs> with that as well, obviously, I've been asking all of our guests this, but I want to know for you too, obviously, with something that you are starting very ground up mm. um, and taking your experience to do this now in this initiative for the Bronx, what advice would you give people about doing something that they're mm. passionate about? Look for your friends. Uh, look for your friends who have the same spirit as you. It doesn't have to be the same field. It doesn't have to be literacy. It doesn't have to be books. So, but people really love and care about the Bronx. It could be about fashion. It can be about music. It can be about financial literacy. As long as you have the same heart and goal for the Bronx, there's no reason you can't work together and support each other. So look for your friends and look for your your found family. Yeah, such a great lesson with that as well. And I can't let you go without asking oh. you. Favorite book or a book oh. you recommend all of us to tap into oh today? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Putting you on the spot, well, I know. <laughs> are. Um, you know what? I just did a program this week called The Bronx is My Home. It's a really wonderful picture book that, and I think something that's really special about it is if it visits all the green spaces in the Bronx. And I oh. think that's really powerful. So yeah. I'm going to shout out The Bronx is My Home. Oh, that's so beautiful. And of course, with that as well, your favorite part of The Bronx. Oh my know. goodness. Ooh, 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 you're I putting know, me on the spot now for real. All the hot questions. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I, I'm going to call out Bronx River Community Garden. Oh, I, yeah. That's where we're doing the programming, and that is where my little plot of soil is in the Bronx River. 
You know, I'm gonna say the Bronx River is my favorite part of the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I love that river, and I'm thrilled with all the restoration efforts that have happened with it. Oh, I love that, and I love even that when you're shouting these places out, it's places that you have either uh, built some relationship with, have partnered with them as well. That's such a beautiful thing. How important is community to the success of what oh, you are doing? It's everything. A community, it, without community, you're just set adrift in this world. And it was funny, I feel like we were just chatting about this earlier, like the Bronx is such an opening and welcome place to any idea, to, as long as your heart is open, the Bronx is the home, right home for you. Mm -hmm. I love that, such a good oh, lesson. And obviously it is home and we're so happy to have you here as well. Thank you, Conchetta Gleason, founder of Wildflowers and Books. For more information, follow at wild with an E dot flowers dot books. To show your support on GoFundMe, visit Let's Launch a Children's Bookstore in the Bronx. Stay tuned for our open artist spotlight is coming up next.